the mammalian ovum was discovered by the Estonian-born scientist Karl Ernst von Bayer. Karl Ernst von Bayer was born into a Baltic German noble family in the Pipe Estate in Estonia, a knight by birthright. He was one of the ten children in his family. Because of the large size of the family, his parents entrusted Karl during his early years to his father's brother, Karl, and his wife, who lived on the neighboring estate and were childless. Here Karl acquired the love of plants that later drew his interest to botany and natural history. At the age of seven, he returned to his own family. After private tutoring in their home, Bayer spent three years at the school for members of the nobility in Reval in order to prepare himself for a military career. However, neither swords nor horses could stop his interest from changing to the natural sciences. When Karl decided to enter the university, his father encouraged him to go to Germany, but he insisted on entering the local University of Dorpat that opened six years earlier. In 1812, during his tenure at the university, he was sent to Riga, the capital of Latvia, to aid the city after Napoleon's armies had laid siege to it. As he attempted to help the sick and wounded, he realized that his education at Dorpat had been inadequate. He notified his father that he would need to go abroad to finish his education. He continued his education in Germany. In Würzburg, a German anatomist, Agnes Dullinger, introduced him to the new field of embryology, the branch of biology and medicine concerned with the study of embryos and their development. In 1827, Bayer published a book on the mammalian ovum and the origin of man. This book laid the foundation for modern comparative embryology. The goal of comparative embryology is to make sense of how an embryo develops. In Bayer's own words, when I observed the ovary, I discovered a small yellow spot in a little sack. Then I saw these same spots in several others, and indeed in most of them, always in just one little spot. How strange, I thought. What could it be? I opened one of these little sacks, lifting it carefully with a knife onto a watch glass filled with water, and put it under the microscope. I shrank back as if struck by lightning for I clearly saw a minuscule and well-developed yellow spear of yolk. Today, Byers lost the common name for a set of his four rules to describe the general patterns of embryonic development. As he discovered, the embryos of different species are similar at a certain point of development and then diverge completely, whereas general characteristics develop before specific traits. One Byers' work was later used by Charles Darwin to support his theory of evolution. Among his other abilities, Bayer had talents that distinguished him socially. He had great wit, which endeared him to those who knew him, and he was very loyal to his friends. One friend in particular may be singled out. In the winter of 1839 to 1840, von Bayer made the acquaintance of Grand Duchess Alina Pavlovna. She was the wife of Grand Duke Mikhail Pavlovich, young spur of Tsar Alexander I of Russia, and an enlightened patron of the arts and sciences. Bayer instructed her two daughters in natural history and enjoyed her friendship for many years. Although Bayer was a very versatile and prolific scientist throughout his life, from polar expeditions to fish protection, but the discovery of the mammalian egg was the deed that engraved his name in the history of the greatest scientific discoveries. Bayer received many honors during his lifetime. The famous geographer and explorer Alexander von Humboldt personally brought him the mill by Paris Academy, much to Bayer's delight. Bayer once wrote of Humboldt that he was versatile, yet always accurate as an observer, deep and far-seeing as a thinker, exalted as a seer. He might as well have been speaking of himself. After celebrating his 50th anniversary as Doctor of Medicine, Bayer moved back to Dorpat, Estonia, in 1867. He died on November 28, 1876. Less than one-tenth of his 300 studies have been translated into English. There's a famous quote by Bayer. All new ideas pass through three stages. First, they're dismissed as nonsense. Then they're rejected as being against religion. And finally, they're acknowledged as the truth, with the proviso from the initial opponents that they knew it all along. In his honor, up to early 2011, when Estonia joined the Eurozone, one of Estonia's banknotes bore his portrait.